You really are sport for choice at the moment if you're after a PowerFlow card for Home Assistant. I've already covered the Tesla style power card, the PowerFlow card and my personal favourite the PowerFlow card plus. I'll stick links to the videos covering those down in the description but today I want to show you the newest kit on the block, the Give TCP PowerFlow card which is designed specifically for Give Energy inverter and battery owners. The Give TCP PowerFlow card is specifically intended to be used with the Give TCP add-on for Home Assistant, which means that if you don't have a Give Energy inverter, then you're not really going to be able to use it. But if you are a Give TCP user already, then be prepared for the easiest installation ever because this card can pretty much configure itself. Yet, because it's designed for Give TCP users, it can detect your inverter and battery entities and set up all the various power flows for you. There are absolutely Absolutely tons of configuration options too for adding extra information, additional entities and even different styles of layout. Before you begin, make sure you have Give TCP installed. Follow the instructions in this video to sort that if you haven't already. I'll put a link to it in the description for you. You'll also need to make sure that you have hacks installed and there's another video here on how to do that. Once you've done that, come back here or if you've already got them installed then let's dive right in and take a look at the card. Installing this card is very easy because the developer has gone to the effort of adding it to the default hacks repositories. Just open hacks, click on front end and then click on explore and download repositories. Search in here for give TCP and you should see one result, the give TCP PowerFlow card. Click on that, click on the blue download button and then the next download button. Then reload the browser once it prompts you to do that. Now go and find the dashboard where you'd like to place this card. I've created one here called Give TCP Power Flow. Just edit your dashboard and add a card. You can either search in the little box there or scroll all the way down to the bottom and you should see this custom Give TCP Power Flow card. Now I'm going to give this a name of Power Flow. You select your inverter from this little drop down list, your battery from this list here and it gives you a view instantly. So you can customise it all you like, you can change the dot size, that's the little dots that are flying along those flows, you can change the speed of those dots, uh, the outline size changes how thick everything looks on those entities, um, the flow sides are for the lines that are connecting everything. I'll just reduce those back down a little bit and you can obviously change the size of those balls as well balls bubbles balloons now the power threshold here defines the point at which the numbers inside these entities uh, will appear so if I set that to 200 you'll see the grid one disappeared because it was only 48 scroll down a little bit you can hide inactive flows which uh, just hides the lines that are not doing anything I think that looks a little uneven personally right then let's look at some of the other customization options so on the grid um, solar battery and the house you've got lots of different options here so you can change things like the color of the uh, lines and the circles and you can change whether the dots that are flowing along them ease in or out um, I've not actually got anything on the grid there so let's just uh, put that back to linear so on the solar you can see that's doing something I'm going to change that to ease in and out you can see it sort of speeds up and then slows down I'll put that back to normal but the best thing about this card is the various layout options here on this tab now you can see by default it's showing you the cross layout uh, so it's like a cross in the middle you can change the radius of the bend in the middle there using the corner radius and you can change the gap between the lines if you want to but you've also got a circle layout and you can change the size of that circle if you want to and there is a square layout now in the square layout it's starting to look a little bit like um, all of the other cards that are out there so you can set the lines to curved angled like that or straight if you want to and then finally there's this list layout here 
I'm not personally a big fan of this. I guess some people must like it, but it doesn't look very pretty to me. I prefer um, something like the, the cross layout here. If I jump over to the house entity here, uh, you can see we've got these custom options here. So I can enable a custom option. I'm gonna select the car simulated power sensor and I call this EV charger. Now you can add two different custom items to it. I'm going to save that, add it to my dashboard. Now if I go over to my power simulation section, I can ramp up the power running through the car and you can see the EV charger has got some power running into it. So as you can see, for Give Energy users who want a really easy to configure PowerFlow card with tons of customization options, then the Give TCP PowerFlow card is certainly one to consider. For me personally, I'll be sticking with the PowerFlow card plus though. I just prefer its look that's consistent with the Home Assistant Energy Flow card, and because I have a solar edge inverter too, I can use the entities from that integration in the card rather than be forced to use the Give Energy ones. But there's not really a lot in it, and both both cards are getting a lot of development attention right now with regular updates adding new features all the time. I'm pretty certain that by the time I release this video then it'll already be out of date. Anyway, if you found this video useful then please give it a like, let me know in the comments which PowerFlow card you've chosen to use and why, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel to see more videos from me. Thank you for watching, goodbye.